Imagine a world where you can just think about something and it happens. What type of future would that be where your thoughts power the things around you? What things would benefit from understanding your thoughts and emotions? Our brains are very complex. They have billions of neurons and trillions of neural connections that fuel what makes us human. So when I learned that it was possible to measure brain activity with sensors, I knew I needed to give it a try. As a software engineer, the idea of being able to access brain data from a computer felt like for the first time I could use code to understand myself better and the people around me. So I started experimenting. And not much longer after that, one thing became very clear. Quantifying our thoughts and emotions can empower our minds. We have been using electrodes to measure brain activity for almost 100 years. This is the same technology used in hospitals to detect abnormalities in your brain activity. Here's how it's work. Small sensors with wires are placed in the scalp they capture the electrical activity produced by your neurons. The electrical activity is measured in microvolts and then sent to a computer. The computer displays the numbers captured by the sensors. And it looks something like this. In this example, we're getting data from eight different parts of our brains. Each sensor reads data 250 times per second. And our first glance is very overwhelming, trying to make sense out of such an unfamiliar and chaotic representation of what's happening inside our minds. So then the challenge becomes turning what appears to be random numbers into something meaningful. And this is when turning these numbers into the frequency domain comes into play. As you can see here, there are five major frequency bands. They go from very fast to very slow rhythms. And it is amazing how the various frequency bands correlate to different cognitive states. Have you ever wondered how successful you were in meditation? This is how we can quantify it. This is also how we can detect if you're falling asleep or if you're highly focused. With advances in artificial intelligence, portable brain imaging, and powerful microchips, we're now able to derive more quantitative information about our minds than ever before. We can detect awareness levels. Are you drowsy? Are you paying attention? We can detect basic emotions as well. Are you surprised? Are you happy? But most importantly, how much? How surprised and how happy? But we know the brain has so much more to offer. Did you know there's a particular region in the brain called the motor cortex? The motor cortex is responsible for planning and executing voluntary movements. And by also measuring the brain activity in the motor cortex, we can detect motor-based intentions as well. And I say intentions because without actually moving your hand, but by thinking about moving your hand, the motor cortex will plan that movement, then it will produce enough electrical activity that can be detected as well. This is called motor imagery. As it turns out, the neurons in the motor cortex will activate when imagining a movement. Think of imagining pinching your left hand and having that intention be communicated to a device near you. Thank you.
This is real. We call this thing to scroll. Imagining a motor-based thought and see it manifest in the things around you is an amazing feeling. We're effectively taking our minds outside our bodies. Now, detecting motor imagery requires training. Every brain is different. Some of these algorithms require prior information about us. Just like when you train your phone so it recognizes your fingerprint or your face so you can unlock it later. But instead of taking snapshots of our fingers and our faces, we take snapshots of our thoughts. Do you know that the average person in America owns 13 internet-connected devices? No wonder why, on a daily basis, we tap our phone screens, we click and press our keyboards around 10,000 times. Seriously, 10,000 times. That's crazy. That's 3.5 million voluntary hand movements a year. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. We got comfortable with our traditional interfaces, our mice, our keyboards. We adapted to make up for the limited usability. But are they the best we've got? Imagine a world where we didn't have to tap so many times during the day in order to interact with technology. What if you could just think to skip to the next song while you're working? Or even better, the music playing has been pre-selected based on your mood that day. Imagine a world where we could track our emotions in real time and get to know ourselves better. Maybe there's an app that tells you, don't send that email when you're pissed. <laughs> I could definitely use that. What if we shared our awareness levels with critical technology? Maybe your car is programmed to pull over if you're falling asleep at the wheel. Quantifying our thoughts and emotions will empower our minds. I firmly believe in what Laura Kelvin said. To measure is to know. We just need the right tools. My co-founder, AJ Keller, and I started building the necessary hardware and software to make these things possible. We're building neural devices and neuropowered applications that will basically give you superpowers. And we're very excited about a future where this technology is available to everyone. We could be lavender our minds for far more than we're doing today. And with the right tools, we'll get to measure and we'll get to know. Thank you. <laughs>